This is Algebra 2, Chapter 7, Section 2, in which we will be solving exponential equations and inequalities. When we solve exponential equations, the idea is you want to have the same base on both sides of the equation. Then the bases, I use the term loosely, cancel out. They don't technically cancel out, but that's a mathematical distinction. For your purposes, you can think cancel out. And when those bases are gone, you have something simpler to work with. So let's look at our first case here. We have 3 to the 2x equal to 3 to the x minus 5. You notice they're both the same base, 3. Since they're the same base, we can cancel out the 3's and just work with the powers. So 2x is equal to x minus 5. Well, that's an easier equation to solve. We know how to do that. We'll subtract this x over, and we get x equals 5, and we're done. Just because our bases were the same, we were able to get rid of them. Sometimes, they're not giving us the same bases. But for so far, anyway, you'll be able to make them into the same bases. Warning, this will require a little bit of thinking sometimes. Okay, you're going to have to change numbers into something with a power on it. Okay, last chapter we did some things with a cubes list and a fourths list and things of that sort. Those numbers are likely to be the ones you're going to be working with here. So for example, we have here 4 to the 2n minus 1 is equal to 64. Well, they don't have the same base right now. But 64, it turns out, is 4 to the third power. That was on our list of cubes that we had last chapter that you should still have floating around in your notes somewhere. Now the bases are the same. So the powers can, or the bases can cancel out. The powers are what we work with. Add the 1 over and divide. And we have our final answer of n equals 2. All right. Same idea is going to come into play over on this one. We have 5 to the 5x, and we have 125 to the x plus 2. Bases aren't the same. But if we do a little bit of inspection, we find out that 125 is 5 to the 3rd. Okay. Notice what we did. We changed the 125 into a base of 5. so that we have something to work with that has the same base. Now when those bases cancel out, we get 5x on this side, and over here we have 3 times this power out here. So 3 times that, distribute the 3, subtract 3x, divide by 2, and we find out that x equals 3. Okay. So not too bad. Now just like last time we dealt with the growth and decay equations, that's another kind of exponential equation we can work with. Now there's a slight difference in the one we did last time. If you remember the uh, teenager metabolizing the caffeine, we had a little bit different equation than what we're going to be working with here. Here we're just going to be working with a times b to the x. a is the original amount, b is the growth rate. Okay. And x represents time, where before we had t representing time. And it's the same equation both ways. b is greater than 1 tips you off to growth, and a fraction tips you off to decay. 
Remember, B can't be negative and it can't be zero. So here we have our friend Kristen who's doing a uh, bit of an experiment with cell growth, bacterial cells. And she starts with a sample that has 7,500 cells on it. Now, after four hours, she measures again and finds out that she has 23,000 cells. Well, if the growth rate stays the same, we want to know how many cells we'll have after 12 hours. Okay. Our first job is to find the growth rate. We have enough information to do that in the first part. Okay. We're working with the exponential equation. We know how much we have at a certain time. We have 23,000. We know what we started with, 7,500. B, we don't know yet. And we know the amount of time is 4 hours. This is an equation we can solve. We divide by the 7,500, and then we take a fourth root to get rid of the fourth power. And my calculator tells me the fourth root of that number is 1.323. If you don't remember how to get a fourth root out of your calculator, just bring it in in class and ask me, and I'll show you how to do it again. Now we have a growth rate. Let's use that growth rate to find the final value for y. So again, it's the exponential equation. We have an initial value of 7,500. We now know the growth rate is 1.323, and we're going to go with 12 hours. Okay. My calculator tells me 1.323 to the 12th is 28.755. And then multiplying by 7,500 gives me an answer of 215,000 and change bacteria cells. Depending on how you rounded this, you might have a different value here, so you might have a little bit different value here. But as long as you're in the right neighborhood, I can live with a couple of you know, who's going to notice two more bacteria cells or something like that. Okay. Another kind that we have to deal with is the compound interest formula. Okay. And just like before, we're going to have a formula. And our formula is A equals P, the principal times 1 plus r over n, the interest rate, divided by the number of periods per year, not per tier. And t is the number of years. Okay. If you're getting it compounded just yearly, then n would be 1. If you get compound interest four times a year, then n would be four. If it's compounded weekly, there's 52 weeks in a year, so n would be 52. It just depends on how many times a year you get the compounded interest. So let's work with this one. We are looking for the account balance after 20 years. If we put $100 in the bank today, and it's going to pay 1.2% interest twice a month. Okay, that's the tip off to how many times it's going to happen. If it happens twice every month and there's 12 months, that means I'm going to get 24 times to get interest. Okay, so N is 24. We know our principal amount, 100. We know our rate. 0.012%, remember you move it two places over, 24 times a year, and then 24 times 20 is the exponent. 
did a little bit of arithmetic here. I did the division and I did this multiplication. 1.0005 to the 480th gives me this according to my calculator and then times 100 gave me this. So my $100 is now worth $127.12 in 20 years. You can probably find a better investment than that. Just saying. Okay, we also said we were going to talk about inequalities. The same basic plan works. We want to get the bases alike and then cancel them out. So 16 equals some stuff, or 16 to the stuff is less than 8. They're not the same bases, but they're both powers of 2. 16 is 2 to the 4th. 8 is 2 to the 3rd. Now they're the same base, so those bases can cancel. Distribute the 4, add the 12, and then divide, and you get 15 eighths, or 1.875 if you want to have a decimal there, that's fine as well. So our answer would be x is less than 15 eighths. Let's go through one more because this one's a little bit tricky. You notice on the right we have a fraction. Now 243 is on our list of fifth powers as 3 to the fifth. And then remember, if it's in the denominator, that gives it a negative power like we talked about in chapter 5. So 3 to the negative fifth is what we have over here. Now the 3's can cancel, add the 1 over, and divide by 2. Okay. You'll notice inequalities work the same way that equations do. The key is get the same bases. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in. If you need help remembering how to use your calculator to get roots out of it, bring that in as well. And uh, make sure you ask about it, and we'll see you in class.